Hello, Uni Divas. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to make this crinoline satellite at And um, this is the one I made myself, and it's bigger than the one I'll teach you today. This green one that I'm, I'm putting on my head, and the other blue one that's same size. So to make your crinoline fascinator to stretch out very well and to be very smooth, measure a millinery wire to be 61 inches, 61 inches length. And these are the materials that will be used for this training. The cap there, the cap base there is already made one. I taught you how to create your ready to wear cap base. So these are the these are the materials I'll be using. Why I'm showing you this flexible wire is you can use it in place of the millinery wire. But I'm using millinery wire for this training. So the first thing to do is to um attach your headband. Attach this headband to the ready-to-wear cap base. Watch the video on how to create your ready-to-wear cap base. I did a video on that. So I'm using my needle and thread to attach the headband. Please, if you want to use Alice band here, if you want to use Alice band, Alice band for your own adnetto, you can do that. Just attach it with your glue gun and candle gun. That's what you will do. But because of the size of this hat, the, the size of the cap, I prefer using head band. So I'm I'm doing attachment there. And the next thing I'll be doing is to cover the cap base with a cloth material. You can use this USU gun. You can use either the big or the small one. They do they do the same work. So I'll be using this to cover it up. But to measure the fabric. To measure the fabric that will match the covering is use your measuring tape to measure the mold used to mold this cap base or measure the cap base directly. I got 11 inches here, which means my fabric will be 11 inches length by 11 inches width. 11 inches length by 11 inches width. So you place your cap base and ensure that all the edges will be able to cover the cap base very well before you rub your U.S. sugar. So rub it in and fold the fabric well inside. I'm through with um, rubbing the U.S. sugar. Next thing to do is to fold in. As I'm folding in, you stretch. Don't know if you get me. You fold in and stretch. The essence of the stretching is to ensure that the front part of this cap base will be very smooth. If you don't stretch out, it will be rumpled and to be rough. So stretch as much as you can. To ensure that you get a smooth edge in front of the cap base or on top of the cap base. The next thing I'll be doing now is to form my round shape that will hold the crinoline. My millinery wire measures 45 inches length. Please, if you want yours to be as big as that, as that one I showed in the picture. If you want it to be very big as that one and it will be very, very smooth, what you measure is 61 inches. Um, please, I don't want this video to be too long. That's why I won't be showing you how to cover the the wire with your bias strip. Please, you can watch a video on my channel on how to do so. This picture on this screen will, will give you a guide on how to learn that. What I'll do next is to use my crinoline. This is what we call crinoline. Six inches crinoline, the big one. So, the crinoline has a thread that, that normally comes with it. That's already made thread that is attached to it. That's how it is produced. So when you drag that thread, it will make pleats for you. With the thread, you will get pleats. See how it is. Once you drag the thread, you will see the quinoline. It will start forming pleats. So I'm dragging it out. So I'll get curve. You know, it is straight. So when I drag it, I want to get curve. I want the, the quinoline to curve in. If you check it out, you find out that it has curved. It has curved. So what I'll be doing now is to attach this crinoline from this edge. I want to cover up that place that is rough. I want to cover up that rough edges with my bias. You can use your bias if you can see well. You can see it down or you can gum it down. Don't know if you get me. You can seal it or you gum it. What I mean by gumming is you can use your you can rub your B B six thousand 
or you rub your USC gum on the bias and wrap around the one I'm showing you. Or you can also use this material called Pitasham ribbon. Pitasham ribbon. The Pitasham ribbon is bigger than bias. If you look at it, you observe that it's bigger than bias. So for those that can see with bias, you can use this to cover up this edge. So while covering, ensure you cover only one edge, not both, just one edge. Then the measurement I used here is one and a half inches of crinoline, one and a half inches. If you watch closely, you see that I've seen it down. If you can't use your bias, please use your Pitasham ribbon. Next thing to do is trend your, your thread to your needle. If you count your thread, it will be eight pieces. I purposely made it that thick so it don't cut on the way while tacking. That edge that has rope is not where I'm tacking. I'm tacking the down part of it, that place that has rope. That part of crinoline that has already made rope will be inside. That's not where I'm tacking. I'm tacking the down part that there's no rope. Don't know if you get me. So first of all, sew down to sew down to the millinery wire and pass your thread up before attaching your crinoline so watch closely what i'm doing and you will get how to do the attachment If you have your fishing line, you can use it here also. But I prefer using thread, a machine thread. So I'm tacking the crinoline to that wire. Please ensure that while sewing, you sew to the bias strip, that bias. Sew to it and use chain stitch. What I'm doing, I take it up. And if you get me, I take the needle up and I'll wrap the needle around it. That is a st chain stitch. Chain stitch. That's what I'm using to hold it down. At this junction, I'm almost through with tacking. But when it wants to get to, to the end part, you measure your crinoline. Drag it and make it to cross where you see before. Then you cut out the excess. Remember, I use one and a half inches here. So what you do is cut out the excess. Then take it to your sewing machine and sew. Is it that you sew or you use your gum to gum it down? I'm done sewing. So you do the remaining tacking. You tack down. Ensure you complete the tacking. You tack it down. When I was doing the sewing, that already made, the already made um, thread went out. So there's no cause for alarm. What you do is strand your thread to your needle and do a running stitch. It's still the same thing. Assuming that thread is still there, what I will do is just to drag it and reform plates. But because it's off, it's nowhere to be found, what I will just do is to do my running stitch. And I will stitch it round, I will stitch it right round. So that's what I'm doing to so get to the end part. Once you get to that end part, you sew. You should see what I'm doing. I'll attach it to the other side and sew down. And remember that I told you that you can gum down, right? After stitching, I observed that the stitch didn't hold some edges. So I'm using razor to cut out that place that I stitched that didn't hold the queen on. I'm cutting it out. I'm trying to loosen up the thread. So I will gum it. So you see the, so you see the gumming method. B6000 is better for this because it has a small mouth. It has a tiny mouth. So I recommend B6000. Yes, you can do it though. But to spoil and dirty your work. So I'm using B6000, pressing it down. Then allow it to dry small. Then you push the queen, the quinoline into that bias. You push it, watch what I'm doing. So the next thing I'll be doing is to place the cap base, the cap on top of the crinoline. That's what I'm doing. Try to make it to be at the center. When you place it there, you adjust so there will be no, it will not be rumpled. 
If you watch, you see that everything is smooth. You can see that it's very smooth. So that's where we do the attachment. But please, while attaching, you can use your needle and thread, or you can also use your fishing line and your needle. It's still allowed. Please, guys, in order to minimize the length of this video, watch the video on your screen. It will give you a guide on how to tag your cap base. See how it looks? Please, after cutting out the excess, use your lighter to burn the edges of this crinol in that place. You, that part you cut out. You can now get your lining, notch the center of the lining, then fix your fix your lining to the hairband. Mm, the video will also give you a guide on how to do your finished work under the cap base. We want to hem the edges of the atnetor. Want to some people call this fastnetor, some people call it atnetor. So anyone it goes. We want to hem the edges so it will look very neat. With the help of my Petersham ribbon, I will rub my USU gum or my B6000. Anyone goes. Anyone that suits you, you use it. But I will be using my B6000 here. The reason is because this Petersham is not really smoothing out. Where I bought it is already rumpled. So I just had to manage it. If I use USU gum here, it will spoil my work. That's the truth. So... So I'm using B6000. So I'll just rub small and cover it up. Watch what I'm doing. You mustn't place your fascinator on a dummy head. You can drop it on a surface, on a flat surface, while you hem with your with a sham rib. Yeah, what I'm trying to do here is to cut out the flowered pattern on this on this netless fa fabric. What I have on my hand is called soldering iron, but it's not the copper one that engineers use. This is the one that norm we normally use to cut out clothes pattern. While doing this, look for a hard surface that the that this soldering iron will not pierce. So the first one I used soldering iron, and you watched that. So this one is I'm using scissors to cut out the flower pattern on this cord lace so after cutting it out i'll place it on my on my first net or my hat net i'll place it there so it will beautify it if you can, you can remember the the blue and the green one i showed you and close patterns were on it so this is how they got it you see that you use a soldering iron to get it if it's a net lace but this one is just cord lace lace this one is very easy so i've cut it out what next i will do is to place it on my fascinator. Watch what I'm doing. And how do you gum it to it? What you do is, I will use my B6000. USU gum can do this work, but I will use B6000 because it has a small mouth. I've gone down the other red fabric that I used scissors to cut out. And you can cut as many as, and Gum it down all over your fascinator, and that is it for this training. Thank you for watching.